You know, when I was a kid, summer movies were the best. You'd go in, have some fun, and leave smiling. There seemed to be an unspoken agreement between the filmmaker and the audience, right? We give you our money, you entertain us. But over the years, something has happened to summer movies. Instead of focusing on the audience's enjoyment, it became about building franchises and finding the next big cash cow. And if you could smash in some forced messaging while you were at it, so much the better. But into that depressing cinematic landscape crashes Fall Guy, a movie with one goal in mind, entertain people. Fall Guy is the story of stuntman extraordinaire Colton Seavers, played by Ryan Gosling, looking like he's pulling to be the next Thor. The guy is jacked. After a literally backbreaking accident, he's fallen on hard times. But when he's called back to the business by an old flame, he finds himself caught up in a web of murder, drugs, and maybe even love. Off the bat, I'll just say, I know a lot of this movie isn't particularly original. The fallen hero reluctantly called back into action, the fish out of water who gets in over his head, the ex-lover with a will-they-won't-they they subplot. How many movies have we seen like that? For goodness sakes, some of Shane Black's best movies are the same basic setup, and one of them starred Ryan Gosling. But rather than try and subvert expectations, Fall Guy wears those tropes like a badge of honor and creates a movie so charming you forget they were tropes to begin with. Let's start with the writing. Yes, I was a little worried during the first act that the cutesy, faux, awkward dialogue between Gosling and Emily Blunt would really wear out its welcome, and director David Leach and writer Drew Paris seemed very aware of that and phased it out naturally as the film went on. It pops up here and there, and yes, it's grating, but it's not nearly as bad as I feared. What draws the attention away from the cringy word salad conversations is a tight story with likable characters. Though some of the scenes come off more like a counseling session no one would ever have in public, the real surprise is how you believe that these people would talk or act like this. It's an exaggerated teen angst as delivered by 40-year-old's version of what a lot of us wish we could say or do, and a lot of the charm that helps the audience accept that is down to the cast chemistry. Gosling, okay, I'll just be honest, he's never been my favorite actor. I saw him in a few things as a kid and thought he was fine. Uh, I saw him in Driver, where he played the character as told, but I've never gotten the idea that he could be a very good actor. He was always the kind of guy that should have been in One Tree Hill and then faded away. But I guess I need to give his filmography a better look, because in Fall Guy, he's accessible, sweet, funny, and yeah, kind of a badass when needed. His Colton Seavers is a little dopey and immature, but somehow it works once you get used to it. Emily Blunt? Well, she is the jaded extern director and is the perfect foil for Gosling's Colton. She brings just the right amount of jaded heat turned cold, but never becomes the bitchy mean queen you'd expect. Her warm moments are truly warm, her immaturity matches his, and their personalities mesh in a way I find was perfectly stated in Deadpool 1. Your crazy matches my crazy. And given Blunt's famous dislike for characters that can be summed up with strong female character, it was awesome to see what drew her to the film and that the movie didn't fall into the modern Hollywood trap of making one character look better by degrading the other. The characters may take shots at each other, but the script lets them shine as complementary parts of a whole. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I saw that in a modern summer film. I will say, though, that David Leach must have a raging hate boner for producers and stars who claim to do their own stunts, because he turned Aaron Taylor Johnson as Tom Cruise-esque movie star Tom Ryder and Hannah Waddington as his agent-slash-producer into the most irredeemably nasty douche nuggets I have ever seen. They were amazing sports as they sleezed their way across the screen in genuine talent and style. And Winston Duke as stunt coordinator Dan Tucker was so much funnier and badass than I would have given him credit for. Never mind the fact that he delivered the comedic goods, but he must have taken that Jimmy Kimmel mean tweet about his legs seriously. Because the dude is packing rocket launchers in those calves. And keep an eye out for the Easter eggs all over his jumpsuit. On a side note, my wife may be one of the only straight women on the face of the planet who doesn't care for Ryan Gosling and thinks he has a punchable face. But that's probably because she hates The Notebook and wants every trace of that movie burned from human memory. I tend to go a little easier on him because of Remember the Titans. Yeah, he was in that. Go, go, go look. After the review. But the real star of the film is the action. 
And man, does it pay off. Jason Bourne style fight scenes, actors dropped off buildings in helicopters, flaming boat jumps, a world record smashing car roll, and a 225 foot long, 40 foot high car jump that I thought had to be Digi until I looked it up because what kind of psycho would do that? Well, these psychos apparently, and it made for some of the coolest stuff I've seen on the big screen in a long time. But the real question is, is Fall Guy any good? Well, it depends on what you want out of it. Is it gonna win any Oscars? No, but it never wanted to. Fall Guy had one simple goal in mind, respecting and entertaining the audience. So, when you're watching it, that's all you have to ask. Are you entertained? I was. And there should definitely be an Oscar for stunts. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and if you want more reviews like this, like, subscribe, and until next time, happy viewing!